Hello beautiful souls and thanks so much for tuning in today. My name is Luca and welcome back for another pick a card reading. So first of all I would like to thank all my followers, all my subscribers. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for all the comments. Like I really I really appreciate you and I really appreciate this interaction and yeah, I want to say that I love you. <laughs> all right. So Let's get in. I'm very excited about this reading because today's theme is going to be um, who have I been in a past lifetime. So we are going to look into our past lifetimes, but it is very... Um, so the intention of this reading is to correlate that specific uh, past lifetime to this lifetime right now. Because very often when we look into past lifetimes, it is almost like opening a can of worms and it is quite difficult to put them back in. So we don't want to just open up a lifetime without there being a specific reason to look into that. So the intention of this reading is to look into a lifetime that is relevant for this lifetime right now. And this can be one specific timeline uh, or lifetime, this can be more lifetimes, um, it can be a very recent lifetime, it can be lifetimes on other planets, uh, it doesn't matter, it can be a wide var variety. So I really wanted to keep this very open and yeah, without further ado, let's get in. As you can see, we have three piles to choose from. Pile number one is the servant. Pile number two is the zebra. And pile number three is the castle. So use your intuition, see which pile you are most drawn to. Um, as usual, you will find the timestamps in the description box. And I'm going to be seeing you in your reading. Hello, pal number one. So this is your reading if you have chosen the servant. And straight away as I was tapping into the energy of this collective, I was really being made to feel that you are... Um, the essence of your soul is more divine feminine. Because the woman on the picture is carrying water. So there is this essence of you not necessarily being a like a literal servant, but more so being a caretaker, a nurturer. So in a past lifetime, you really have been embodying the principle of a mother, the principle of a healer, and you were providing for your tribe. You were providing water for your community. But water is so much more than just like physical water. It's like being there for the emotional needs of others. Like really filling the cup of others. Like there is really this notion of, yeah, um, a lot of water coming through. So there is also, um, you could also be a water sign. Or your north note, no, your south note could have been in or is in a water sign. So a lot of um, also, yeah, Pisces energy coming through, very um, empathic energy coming through, like I'm really feeling the energy of an empath. And yeah, uh, but let's, let's see where this is going. Um, so I've already shuffled the cards and I'm going to start with Tarot first, first and then we look into the Arco cards. So who has my pile number one? been in a past lifetime and how does this lifetime correlate to this present lifetime so we have the two of swords we have the ten of pentacles beautiful right in line with the golden buddha <laughs> love that the knight of swords the tower all right Then we have the star, beautiful. We have the fool.
Then we have the six of wands, the ace of scepters, and I'm hearing not to take reversals in this reading. So the ace of wands, and last but not least, the high priestess, beautiful. Let's put this here. All right, so a strong message that is coming through is that in a past lifetime, there has been a very important decision for you to make. Like I'm really hearing it was almost choosing whether to create a family or choosing to be in your community or to go on your path, let's say, alone. <clears throat> because with the energy of the high priestess, I'm really being told that you are... You have been a some sort of a healer or a shaman, as I already mentioned. And there was this decision of whether to follow that um, passion or to follow that calling. It's not a passion, it's more of a divine calling. Or to stay with your family. And there was really this split. And for a long time, you couldn't decide which way to go. For a long time, it was... Um, yeah, I'm really feeling that for a long time you have been standing in this in-between state, choosing this option, choosing the other option, because on a soul level, <clears throat> you knew that this was your destiny, your higher calling to follow this calling of... Yeah, I'm, I'm more so being taken, um, so that it's making a bit more sense. It's more so... Um, uh, like in higher dimensions, like we're more so uh, talking about other planets right now. So it's not more connected to Earth because there is almost this idea of needing to leave your planet almost or needing to leave your home, needing to leave your tribe, your people and to go on to follow your calling elsewhere where it's outside of your community, but it almost feels outside of your planet. So this could also feel like we're looking at it from a soul level, from a higher dimensional level. So it's almost like your soul tribe or your soul group has chosen to incarnate in, let's say, this planet. Like I'm almost being made to show, like I'm being shown a tree. And so your soul tribe is the stem. And then your soul tribe was going in this branch and there was almost this split where you had to decide whether to follow them in this branch or to go to another branch. But if you decided to go to another branch, that, that meant that you were disconnected from your soul tribe, but for a long time. Because whenever there is a split with, like on a soul level, like we're really talking about like the higher dimensions I'm being taken to, like... 12th, 12th dimension, like really high uh, dimensions. And when there is this split, then it takes um, a lot of lifetimes until the reunification happens. So on a soul level, this really meant that there was, yeah, you, you were doing this process on your own a lot uh, until the reunification could happen. So let's say when you decided to go this other way, then you have had to go through certain incarnations on this planet and when you have done with that when you were done with that then you went to this uh, star system and then to this like it's a long process until you merge back with them in the higher realms like obviously we're always connected because no matter how far we go out um, how many branches there are it's still connected to the tree but it's more so there is a stepping down of dimensions. And obviously in the highest dimensions, you're always connected with the stem. But it's almost this question of needing to, yeah, go further and further and further and almost taking a different road. And I'm being told that you have taken a different road because you have chosen. It's very beautiful to see the correlation here. I was very much feeling this energy, like this vessel of water is, yeah, it's the same vessel of the star. Like you have chosen 
to pour into yourself because you have chosen self-growth for yourself on a soul level because you already knew that that other branch was a higher enrichment for you on a soul level and there, it's really not specifically this one lifetime but i'm really being taken to this decision that you made on a soul level in the higher realms especially with the star we are talking about the highest dimensions and yeah it's almost like from a higher dimensional perspective you were looking at earth um, and you said like, oh, wow, this is an interesting mission. This is an interesting idea. It's not something that my soul tribe is doing, but I'm doing it for myself. I'm doing it for my own enrichment. And you have chosen to pour into yourself uh, in this way. And you knew on a soul level that this, that this path is more challenging. But more challenges obviously means more growth. So maybe your soul tribe have, have, has chosen a different path, which was maybe not so challenging because they were maybe together or it was just a different mission. It was a different type of experiences. But you have chosen to go this path, to go on this, to walk on this path on your own because you knew that it was, um, yeah, an enrichment. And I'm really being taken also to this part here where there is um, the energy of a cherry blossom coming through. So you are a very strong soul. First of all, you are a very, very strong soul, a uh, very old soul, and you have had many, many, many lifetimes on other planets, in other dimensions. And uh, yes, you are a healer. You are very connected to spirit. And again, coming back to this branch of cherry blossoms, when this split happens, happened, when you had to decide which path to go, then you knew that everything is passing, that this is not forever, that one day you will reunite with your soul tribe, one day you will reunite with your family. And that's why the energy of the cherry blossom is that everything is fleeting, everything is temporary, and it's really about cherishing that temporary beauty because you knew that this too was passing and this too like you were reconnecting with your soul tribe anyway and you wanted to have this fleeting moment of something which is very unique because the cherry blossoms they only blossom uh, in a very limited time frame um I've been living in Japan, so there is even a cherry blossom forecast. <laughs> and there is really this, yeah, this one week or sometimes even less where they blossom and then all the petals fall and then it's like, uh, it's changing. So coming back to the reading, it's, yeah, you wanted to have this very unique experience because again, this is something which is very rare. Like the experience that we are having in this lifetime, on this in this realm right now, is very, very unique and it doesn't happen very often. So you wanted to seize the opportunity and to, yeah, to take it. And I'm also being taken to this crystal part, like you wanted to have this experience of crystallizing your light vessel, of rising to the top. Uh, but obviously before you had to almost yeah <laughs> start completely anew um, because planet earth is a planet where souls initially uh, forget about their soul's origins they forget about their soul's heritage and that's the more challenging part of this planet because there are other planets where we remember our soul origin where we remember where we where we come from we remember our star origins but earth especially is very tricky in that sense because with the fool we start with a completely blank slate with uh, a complete forgetfulness like we are a species with amnesia but obviously on a soul level on a genetic level all this information is stored like we are this, this information can never be lost because 
everything is source, everything is one, it's still always, everything is contained within itself, and you knew that. But obviously, to have this experience, you first had to go through this, through this forgetfulness. Um, and yeah, it's not a specific lifetime, but there is really this focus on looking at it from a soul perspective, like you reconnecting back with almost this initial intention of coming to Earth, why you chose to come here. And the reason why you chose to come here, again, the correlation with this lifetime, is because you knew that it was super enriching, like it's um, full of blessings. And But yeah, you first needed to walk through that portal. You first needed to tune your frequency down, like I'm really being made to... There is really this, again, this tree that is splitting in a bigger branch and then a smaller branch and smaller branch. And it was a long process because to come from such a high vibration, and again, I at the beginning I was taken to the 12th dimension, maybe even higher dimension, to, to reach the earth realm, <laughs> which is one of the lowest vibrations, like the highest densities. It's a long process, like to be toned down that much. And that's why it was a long process to get there, because we cannot come from such a high vibration and then go into the third realm all at once, like our soul, it would not be possible for us to bear. So that's why there, there was this long process of toning down, of increasing the density, of stepping down, stepping down more and more, so that you could gradually be attuned to this high density, to this lower vibration. Um, and that's why you had many, many lifetimes on other planets, in other star systems. I'm also being taken to Andromeda, that is existing in vibrations of the 12th dimension, uh, ninth dimension, uh, 8th dimension. But then you entered this galaxy, and then you had um, incarnations in, I'm being taken to... Uh, Pleiades, but also to Arcturus, and also to Formalhaut is coming through in the Pisces, Pisces constellation, a lot of lifetimes also there. I'm also being taken to stars that are not very known, because we always talk about, um, let's say Pleiades, we talk about Sirius, we talk about, uh, let's say, the more known stars. But you have had many lifetimes in um, constellations that are not very much talked about. And that's why I'm feeling a very unique energy. And again, you came here to Earth to provide that wisdom, to nurture your community. And yeah, I I'm, I'm hearing you wear your heart on a sleeve, on the sleeve. And I'm being taken to, it's very beautiful actually, like wow. I'm being taken to this um, bracelet, this turquoise bracelet, and I don't know why, but I felt called to wear this necklace, <laughs> which is exactly the same, and I, I knew obviously nobody sees me wearing this necklace, but I felt called to wear it. So there is definitely something about turquoise crystals right now, so you might feel called to wear uh, turquoise crystals, or there is almost the energy that is coming through is the bridge between between the throat and the heart. Like I'm really being told that there uh, like a transformation is like there is an alchemization happening right now, because in this lifetime you are meant to work. Let's say in this axis, so it's about expressing that which is in the heart like I'm, I'm really being told the the bridge between the heart and the throat is very relevant for you in this lifetime and this is very interesting uh this is where the high priestess comes in like there is again this green blue turquoise so it's the heart it's the um, throat but it's also the higher chakras so soul star chakra stellar gateway, divine gateway, because, yeah, you have had many lifetimes on other in other dimensions, 
and it's about channeling that information because on a soul level you very much embody the energy of a high priestess and it's about expressing that through the heart so it's less a mental energy so it's not necessarily going through the crown or the third eye but it's almost channeling these higher dimensional frequencies bringing them directly through the heart to the heart and then expressing them from the heart with love with grace and it's yeah i feel you have a very unique way of channeling that's what i want to say because most of the times it's coming from the crown and it's being expressed through let's say from the crown to the third eye and then to the throat or I don't know, it, I don't know, <laughs> I would like to have words to describe what I'm being made to feel, but there are no words, but to put it in words, you have a very unique way of channeling, and I'm being told, keep doing what you're doing, because you know exactly what you're doing, and keep on doing that, and keep on cherishing that uniqueness, because, yeah, your heart is very strong, and your throat is very strong, and there is this uh, alchemization happening right now. And I'm being called to pull some oracle cards. So we are looking at your past lifetime and how this correlates with this present lifetime. Whoops. Okay. So we have purity. You are pure, open spiritual eyes with the unicorn, that's beautiful. We have dolphin baby, Lemurian honor origin, yes, flow, timeless, adaptable, adaptable, free, take your time. And I'm feeling called to pull another card. This one, crystal child, yes, that's exactly what I've been feeling. So you're either very young, uh, the viewers that are, are watching, or you are one of the older crystal children. Like obviously there are many, like, like yeah, what I wanted to say, you're one of the first crystal children, but you could already be a bit older. You could be in your 30s, in your 40s, or you're very young as you're watching this, because... Um, there are many different waves of, let's say, star seeds and light workers. Um, there is a common saying that the first ones were the indigo children, then come the crystal children, and then come the rainbow children. Um, but I personally, personally feel it's not like linear because <laughs> nothing is linear anyway. Um, but I feel it's more so correlating to your soul's mission. And with the crystal child, I'm really being um, I'm really being told that actually I would like to wait. Let's let's move the cards a bit so we can still look at the cards. Let's see. This is better. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as I was saying, the uh, crystal children, it's more so correlating to your specific mission. So as crystal children, our mission is to crystallize our light vessel. And again, there is, again, uh, um, this is a confirmation of this energy of the crystallization that was coming through at the beginning. And with the vessel, the light vessel, this is our body. So your mission in this lifetime, how it correlates, how this lifetime, even though it's not a specific one, but how your soul journey correlates with this lifetime here, it's about crystallizing DNA. And it's really this transition from a carbon-based vessel to a crystalline vessel. And that happens through this ascension process that we're all going through. True. And I'm really being told that you have a very important mission in this lifetime. And it has to do with you bringing in your purity. And you do this through your intuition. 
because with the unicorn coming true there is really again this high 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 sensitivity like this really strong um this really strong connection to spirit and it's very important to channel these higher dimensional high vibrational energies into the earth and again with the color green it happens through your heart chakra it happens through your essence through your beingness and your presence is already the gift your presence is already setting the foundation for this to happen and it's not really a calling to like I'm not really seeing that there is a specific thing needing to happen but interestingly enough I'm being taken to the tower so yes you could have gone through a long uh, um, a lot of turmoil in your life um, but this was so that your DNA could heal on a genetic level like um, I'm really being taken to the um, dolphin baby with the solar flares the energy of light codes coming through it's almost like there was this high influx of light vibration of light information and this almost caused a tower moment in your life where yeah all fragments of your old self were disintegrating and your foundations were being shaken but you're very much aware that this is part of this whole mission like you're very much aware that all of this needed to happen like um, all these foundations first needed to fall down or like you needed to build new foundations so that this new crystallized DNA um, yeah could uh, could be set into place like it's it's happening on <laughs> what I'm being told is the work that you're doing is more so happening in the higher realms and that's why sometimes maybe you you think uh, what should I do or you want to start something you want to implement something uh, but I'm being told you're already doing it even if things are not really showing up in the physical realm the amount of work that you already have been doing in the higher realms like you you're already following your purpose maybe you're wondering what is your purpose or maybe you're wondering what you should be doing like I'm being told you already are doing it because yeah it's such it's such a beautiful energy like the energy that is coming through true is a very childlike energy again a very pure energy but it's almost untouchable it's so strong because it's so pure that it knows that you know even if there is a tower moment even if there is darkness even if there is pain or adversity it's this strong and unshakable love and confidence and trust in the divine that it's like yeah <laughs> i'm being shown this um this child that is here and says oh yeah i'm just doing my job and it's working <laughs> and yeah it's i'm just here being pure being myself doing my job and and it's unfolding and there is such a a confidence but it's not a an arrogance it's not like needing to show it's just this super super pure energy and yeah you're 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 doing it you're it's already happening and um to finish off this reading i'm feeling called to pull some more cards from this deck and we are looking at your past lifetime and how this correlates with this lifetime yes yeah, see like the the crystals they are emanating from you like it's almost like you're just standing there holding your ground with your purity channeling these higher dimensional energies receiving these light codes and grounding them into the earth just by being so it's just like yeah i'm here <laughs> it's like yeah hello here i am and i'm doing my work and it's working and <laughs> it feels very effortless that's what i want to say like there is no need for an excessive effort there is no need for any yeah any excessive action like you're already already successful with what you're doing because you are shining your light you're holding this torch you're holding this pure light and 
also this is already contributing to the tower moment but not only within yourself but within the whole collective like you are contributing to this tower moment in the whole human collective like in the whole earth realm and also grit work is coming true very strongly like you are like the old grit is collapsing that's that's what i'm hearing also with the earth um in the star cards there is a big sense of grit work coming true and that's yes okay oh beautiful <laughs> love this energy we have the giraffe with 13 we have the parrot which is a kakadu number six and we have the cat number 10 yes yeah okay so the message that is coming true is no matter what's happening no matter if you still feel adversity or, or or if there are still people who are triggered by your purity because that happens as an empath and as such a high vibrational soul as you are you will trigger the beep out of people <laughs> because simply by shining that light by holding that pure frequency you are triggering the shadows and the demons of people who have never been able to embody that purity and with the giraffe coming true it's about embodying that energy and with 13 it's the divine feminine energy embody your divine feminine essence this watery nurturing loving magical mystical pure high vibrational essence and rise above everything that tries to stand in your way because the giraffe is about having a higher perspective about not looking down to others because obviously that's their essence like it's not like they are thinking they're better than anyone else but it's standing in your being having that higher perspective and just existing because you are a giraffe you cannot you know you cannot lower your 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 neck to a com to comfort other people you cannot make yourself small to accommodate other people like you are who you are and that's okay and if people don't like that that's also fine like they're you're just being yourself like you're not being arrogant you're not being you don't think that you're better than anyone else you're simply just being yourself and allow yourself to be that pure being allow yourself to be that pure light and simply stand there and help others no to just yeah you are you are you are already helping others by standing there and being in your essence and with the parrot it's again i'm being taken back to the energy of the throat it's communication but with the number six it's service so your service is by communicating maybe you're also feeling drawn to be some sort of a counselor or a motivational speaker a healer a caretaker um a holistic practitioner massage therapist meditation teacher yoga teacher holistic healer it's really about unconditional love and it's really about yeah unfolding that spiritual wisdom that you have within yourself and yeah bringing it out into the world and with the cat <laughs> that's exactly the energy that confidence but it's a gentle confidence again with the number one standing in your truth standing in your power but it's super gentle it's super yeah dolphin baby <laughs> this uh, energy of a child yeah again <laughs> i'm really seeing this crystal child this pure child that it's standing there and yeah hello i'm here and i'm existing and that's all i need to do and it's yeah a very beautiful very gentle energy and Oh my goodness, I love this reading. I absolutely loved uh, channeling these messages. And yes, that's what I have for you. I hope you resonated with the messages. Um, please let me know in the comments if you did. And I'm also offering personal readings. So if you would like to have a personal reading, you can always reach out to me on my email address. And I'm wishing you all the blessings, wishing you all the love, and I'm really looking forward to be seeing you in the next reading. Thanks so much for watching.
Hello, pal number two. So this is your reading if you have chosen the zebra. Zebra? I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> but it's very interesting because as I was choosing the card for this pile, um, I almost didn't want to take it because <laughs> it came out for the other reading uh, as well. So I was like, yeah, let's maybe choose another one. And then it came out again. <laughs> so they were, uh, your guides were really were really adamant about me using the zebra and right now as I'm looking at the card it's less the zebra itself but it's more so the number 12, 12 that I'm being taken to so the energy that is coming through is the energy of completion 12 is also about the completion 12 is about the 12 signs of the zodiac 12 is um there are so many things with, with 12, like uh, it's a very spiritual number, like the 12 apostle, apostles, I'm being taken to the 12 chakra system, I'm really being taken to, yeah, there is something connected with the number 12 that is relevant to your life path. But again, 12 is also about the completion, so it's the completion of a cycle. So the energy that is coming through it's more so um, this lifetime feels like the last lifetime of a long cycle because yeah 12 is the whole revolution of the star cycle of the cycle of the zodiac and it's about yeah also with the zebra we, I'm, I'm seeing this duality so it's almost a long cycle of being in duality but I'm almost being made to feel that now something about that is ending or like something about that is completing and it's, yeah, I'm also feeling that you're changing your tribes. Um, but yeah, let's see what, what this is about. I'm feeling called to pull the cards. Um, we're asking about the past lifetime of my pal number two and how that lifetime correlates to this specific lifetime. So we have the nine of wands. Yes, you're nearly at the finish line. Like this is, you're nearly at the end. Like keep on going, hang in there because a big, a huge cycle is about to be over or this is the last lifetime of a very big cycle. But let's see what this is about. Queen of Swords in reversed. Then we have the Queen of Pentacles, two queens. King of Pentacles, okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we have Temperance. Seven of Swords. Then we have the Princess of Swords, the Hanged Man, then we have the, again, Queen of Pentacles, I'm putting this upright, and we have the Prince of Swords, okay, this is a very interesting energy. All right, inner self. What is the past lifetime of my pal number two? Actually, the first thing that I'm noticing is that all the cards, they have a very similar vibe. They have a very similar color. There are a lot of greens and blues, and it's more so cold colors. And with this, I'm really being told that a lot of your past lifetimes, they have been very similar. So it's almost like you went through the same experience over and over and over again because you really wanted to perfect something. And it's it was very important for your life mission to really be a master at this specific thing. And that's why it's almost like you have been repeating this cycle over and over again. But I'm really being told that you are at the tail end of it. And we are looking at it from a soul perspective. Like, again, it's very interesting for pile number one. It was also 
not a specific lifetime that is coming true, but it's more so, yeah, you're looking at your past lifetimes, but from a soul perspective and taking that perspective into this lifetime. And it's very, yeah, there is a lot of air energy coming true and also pentacles energy. And it's almost about the thing that you are perfecting has to do with your belief systems, has to do with your mindset. And it's almost about, yeah, with the princess of swords, cutting with the past. So I'm also being told that you have been going through a lot of shedding, like a lot of shedding of skin. There were a lot of things that you needed to let go of, also in past lifetimes. And obviously everything that we went through through in past lifetimes uh, kind of correlates to this lifetime. So there is always a connection with, um, yeah, the lifetimes are always connected. And yeah, Prince of Swords and Princess of Swords, like there was a lot of letting go, a lot of cutting off of more so expectations of other people. Like I'm really being made to feel that you had, you were in this role maybe even a uh, royalty that is coming through for some of you maybe you needed to be um, or you were in some sort of a high position where people expected you to be something that you are not because i'm really being made to feel this yeah there is this energy of i want to be myself but i can't i want to stay true to myself but it's almost i have to lie to myself, I have to tell myself lies or I have to not be not honoring my needs so that I can move forward. So there is almost, I'm almost feeling this energy of you, um, how do you say, sharpening a blade and being ready for a fight because, yeah, you, you always had to, there is this energy of needing to fight for who you are, like needing to prove yourself and needing to please others and this has really caused a lot of lifetimes of cutting away these patterns because again since you have been going through a similar experience um, over and over again it took a lot also in this lifetime to let go of certain belief systems and I'm really being told that this is not something just from this lifetime like it has been such a long like i'm really seeing how far back it goes this work of changing your thought patterns and you are a very meticulous person like a very detailed person like you you look at all the details and you're not missing anything like a very analytical energy but at the same time yeah some sort of a warrior but not a warrior of being on a battlefield, but a warrior of <laughs> seeing everything, like almost being on a watchtower and not missing one single piece, like taking record of everything that's going on. And I'm really being told that you have been very good in, yeah, not allowing anything to slip past. Like as soon as you saw something, as soon as you recognized a pattern, you took your sword and you cut it away. And what you were doing with this work was really finding that balance and relearning how to pour into yourself. And I'm really being told that you have been there for other people many lifetimes. Like again, you had to, I don't know, it's some sort of a a position in public or a position where you were seen for someone who you however were not for some reason I'm being um, brought to I'm being taken to Marilyn Monroe so maybe you could also have been a an actress or you could have been actress or actor sorry um, you could have been yeah there is a female energy coming through for some reason um, you could have been a queen or a um yes yeah, some something in the public eye but you were seen for someone who you were not and this took a lot of you on a soul level especially because you have been repeating this over and over again but what you have been wanting to 
internalize or to learn with this is to pour into yourself, is to relearn how to fill your own cup, how to find that balance, almost how to learning how to stay true to yourself by experiencing lifetimes of not being true to yourself. And that's a very unique energy because it's almost like it's almost like I'm being told you didn't need to do it. You didn't need to go through many of the challenging experiences, but you wanted to. Because again, there is a little bit of a perfectionist energy coming through. Like you wanted to not miss any part. Like you wanted to make it very properly. I'm really also feeling a regal energy. Like you're a very... I'm, I'm feeling a, like a very strong heart it's almost like a, an ancient tree a very old tree that is holding their ground and standing there and it doesn't like you don't care if you're standing there for lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes it's it's very important for you to hold your ground a lot of capricorn energy coming through and yes very hard working energy coming through because you knew that on a soul level this was necessary because yeah i'm being taken to the druids and to the celts and before i continue i'm being called to pull the um oracle cards but first of all it's a very unique energy i've never tapped into this kind of energy um but yeah strong earth energy but still with air and if we think about it earth and air are the like two opposite signs and what you have been doing like again <laughs> that's why maybe they were so adamant in me choosing the zebra there is this strong view of duality but it's okay <laughs> i want to continue but i'm feeling uh I i'm being told to use the the um, to use the oracle cards first um there is a big message coming through but i'm gathering the words to express it like i'm feeling it but right now i'm trying to find the words there is this strong thing with duality but polarity and extremes working with extremes but in self, we are asking about the past lifetimes of my pile number two and how this correlates, okay, how this correlates to this lifetime, yes, yes, I felt this energy very strongly, Ellen of the Ways, exactly, that's, that's the card I was feeling when I was talking about it, <laughs> um, let's see how I do this, let's put this here, and we have portals, being told not to use these two joy of life mm -hmm. forgiveness yeah mm -hmm. all right yeah a strong mess okay sorry you cannot see this a strong message that is coming through is i'm feeling right now on a soul level, you are realizing that you have been putting yourself through a lot of challenges and many of them were not really necessary, but you were very adamant on doing it anyway. And right now, as you're realizing that a lot of the pain that you have been going through was, I wouldn't say self-inflicted, but it's almost you realizing that you didn't have to you didn't have to go through such challenging experiences like you didn't have to put yourself through this strong polarity again i'm being taken back to the zebra with this black and white it's almost like yeah being thrown in this side and then in, in the other side and then doing it over again because you missed a part there and there and it's almost like gaining mastery but through a lot of struggle and through a lot of repetition and it's almost the energy that is coming through and the reason why this is coming through now and um is is uh it's about self-forgiveness 
it's about looking at this again but from another perspective see the bigger pictures see the bigger picture and it's almost yeah changing to the perspective of the sun and detaching yourself from these very earthly experiences and I'm also being told you have had many lifetimes on earth again that were many sim very similar and it's about now is the time to rise to a higher perspective now is the time to let go of this cycle that you have been repeating over and over and over again and again I want to re say it one more time you didn't have to go through it so often and now you're realizing it even if you're not consciously realizing it and that's why there is forgiveness coming true so that's why there is this big focus on yeah allowing this to pass now and it's okay to let go of it now and it's okay to transcend this cycle now and I, I really don't want to go into more details because I'm being made to feel that it's you have a hint about what this could be you have a hint about about what this is talking about but the focus of this reading is more so telling you that the cycle is over now and it's your time to yeah rise to a higher perspective and it's your time to let go of what was and feeling that abundance creating your garden because we have the queen of pentacles twice but this time as you want it not as other people want you to be and you can still embody that abundance and again there is nothing wrong with having this energy of wanting to th make things very meticulously of wanting to have things very yeah to really take care of the details it's a very beautiful quality actually that not many people have this very regal a lot of capricorn energy coming through like this very down to earth and very like a heart of gold but a very wise again like an old tree i'm being taken to the willow tree of pocahontas that's the energy that's coming through and um yeah it's uh you you can embody you can still be that tree that role model for others but also in a way that is nurturing for yourself and this is something like you pouring into yourself you wait where was this other card huh oh <laughs> here i almost didn't see it yes this is exactly what it is joy of life it's about learning to have fun again and learning to to pour that brighter side of life into you again and again with the temperance card it's learning to fill your own cup and I'm feeling such a relief like really it's it's such a this was such a long cycle and you're really feeling that finally it's over and the birds are singing and a new dawn is rising and a new yeah with the hanged man is allow allow the sun to shine and even if sometimes things are still um over the place or it's it's still it, it's also very hard for me to find the words because I'm really feeling this I feel I just want to cry <laughs> I feel I just want to let it out and but at the same time with the knowingness that it's really over now with the knowingness that I, I made it and and now it's really about pour, pouring into yourself again and creating this garden of abundance but in a way that is nurturing for yourself and you not needing to go through these challenging experiences again and you really once for all being able to let go of the past and with portals it's a portal into a completely new realm into a completely new way of being yes letting go of the warrior i just read it now letting go of the need to fight letting go of the need to be so strong all the time it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to also allow the emo the emotions to flow because again there is a lot of air and earth energy but i'm kind of feeling the absence of fire and water and that's exactly with this card fire and water joy of life this magical alchemy between 
Uh, I'm seeing liquid light, the marriage between fire and water, allowing your passions to come back and pouring into yourself with these passions. Trust, open your heart, let go, share, and it's about you made it. And that's why there is this feeling of, oh, I, I just want to cry. And at the same time, it's this relief of, I, I really, I really did it. And yeah, but there there are no specifics coming true. But, but I'm more so being made to feel, you know, you know. But still, I'm feeling called. I'm trying to see what exactly it is. But I'm f I feel we have covered quite a bit of it. And I, and I hope you... I kind of feel you know, I kind of feel you know what we're talking about, but let's see if we can get some more specifics of what exactly my pile number two is letting go of from a past lifetime. What is my pile number two letting go of from past lifetimes? And how does this correlate to, oops, okay, to this lifetime? <laughs> Okay, again, Capricorn energy coming through. So I've never had so much Capricorn energy in any reading I've been doing. So you either are a Capricorn or you have a strong prominence of Capricorn in your chart or there has been a lot of restriction again in your past lifetimes. A lot of, yeah, you couldn't be yourself. So many lifetimes of you being restricted and now this restriction is finally like I'm <laughs> I'm seeing a scene where there is a belt that is very tight around a big stomach <laughs> and someone is coming and cutting the belt and like boof, everything is like oh this feeling of taking off a tight shoe or this feeling of finally coming home after a long hard day of work and finally allowing yourself to celebrate and to see the brighter side of life and yeah this this there there your past lifetimes have been defined by a lot of capricorn energy the energy of restriction of you not being restricted in some way but i'm being made to feel that you know what this is talking about and and it has to do with you not really yeah, standing in your truth, almost not being allowed to stand in your truth because you had to please others or you were in this higher position where people saw you for someone who you were not and you needed to be that person. And that was super restricting for you on a soul level. And what else do we have? Oh, okay, two cards actually. We have the... <clears throat> Flamingo, we have the castle made, yes, we have the dog, and we have the whale. With the dog there is this loyal energy coming through, so you were really loyal to this thing that you were learning, like you were really loyal to repeating this over and over again in order to perfect it and again with the castle I'm, I'm hearing you have built your strength with that you have built your castle you have built your fortress and this strength that you have gathered through all these lifetimes of challenges allows you to finally live in your castle full of abundance to finally create your garden where you can feel safe where it's safe for you to enjoy life and safe for you to party. <laughs> I'm hearing party like there is again this correlation with the flamingo. I'm, I'm really seeing such a bright time coming now, such a bright, yeah, a portal, a doorway into a completely new world, into a completely new way of being the sun finally coming out and this celebra celebratory energy coming through and it's, yeah, it's hard to say, but it's almost like something that you haven't seen for a very, very long time because you have been almost stuck in this cycle for many, many lifetimes. And yes, now it's the time to pour into yourself. And now is the time to also, with the hanged man, allow, allow the universe to deliver, 
allow the universe to to provide because again in past lifetimes there was a very strong masculine energy a very strong energy of working and uh, needing to be in control needing to have control of all the things but right now it's about falling into this more feminine energy with the whale this very deep 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 divine feminine energy with wisdom with compassion and almost exploring your emotional side because there was a bit of an absence of water but you reconnecting back with your emotions but also with the 18 it's the number which adds up to the number nine it's about spirit but also completion so finding completion finding closure by reconnecting with spirit reconnecting to the more feminine side and allowing the universe to make things happen without you needing to be in control and without you needing to be yeah to having to being on the watchtower <laughs> because i'm being told you have been on the watchtower for a long time many lifetimes and now is the time to go down connect with people connect with the community have fun enjoy life and allowing the universe to sprout all the seeds that you have been planting like you have had you, you have made um you have done a great job of planting seeds also in past lifetimes through the work that you are doing that you have been doing and right now it's about allowing these seeds to blossom and this is the feminine energy so there is really this strong call of allowing yourself to be more passive in this in this lifetime in general like more more so yeah this strong I'm really feeling this divine feminine energy wanting to flow through and it's about opening the portal allowing yourself to yeah to open the heart deep heart healing that is happening in this pile that's why there were a lot of greens and a lot of this yeah similar hues and yeah such a beautiful energy so this is what i have for you attuned to nature science yeah f allowing allowing the flow allowing allowing the natural cycles of nature letting go of the warrior letting go of the restrictions and allowing that natural flow yes again i'm, I'm seeing a dam that is opened and finally there is like oh everything is pouring again and finally like poof, all the restrictions are breaking out and there is flow again there is there is joy again there is purity again and i'm hearing the sun is shining again and this is this butterfly moment that is happening and maybe another message this is even your liberation from no this is your liberation from this maybe not maybe <laughs> you have the choice after this lifetime to go on another planet to rise to another level to transcend into another dimension like you don't have to reincarnate back into the same old circumstances anymore you have the choice to incarnate wherever you want because this cycle is over now you have completed the cycle 9 and 12 it's a completion and you have the choice of where you want to go next and that's why this life is a true celebration so cherish the time that you are still here because i'm being made to feel that you won't be coming back <laughs> or at least not in the same circumstances so this lifetime is really about cutting all the loose ends cutting away with the past letting go of what was letting go of what's not serving you because the lifetimes in the next lifetimes or also this lifetime from now on it's about a completely new way of living a portal into a new world where there is a lot of celebration okay that was it <laughs> i hope i didn't repeat myself too much but i'm yeah i felt that i needed to go over it again because yeah this is a very unique energy that i've never tapped into but thank you so much for allowing me to channel this and i really hope you resonated with the messages please let me know in the comments if you did and also i'm offering personal readings 
So if you feel called to book a personal reading, you can always reach out to me. And I'm sending you all my blessings and all my love in this new chapter. Enjoying your life, celebrating. Where is the flamingo? Here it is. Here it is. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next reading. Hello, pal number three. So this is your reading if you have chosen the castle. And we are looking at your past lifetimes and how they correlate with this lifetime. So the very first moment I looked at this card, I was being taken to lost civilizations. So you could have had lifetimes in Atlantis that is coming true very strongly. But more so when I'm looking at this um, picture, I'm being reminded or I'm seeing the movie Castle in the Sky. It's a Ghibli movie. Maybe you like that movie. Maybe there is also a message for you in there. It's a super spiritual movie. It's a super unique movie. It's uh, like the flying castle. And if you've seen that movie, like the vibe of that, of the culture there, it's very unique. And that's an, uh, exactly the energy that is coming through. It's like a lost civilization, but it's something that is not known. So I'm even being taken to other planets. It's, um, I'm seeing this landscape where the castles are, yes, uh, a very unique architecture, very unique archaeology, very unique art. So it's a, an ancient culture, but it almost feels like it's not from Earth. And if it's from Earth, then it's an ancient culture, like in the times of Lemuria and Atlantis. But with the birds, I'm also being taken there. It could very well be uh, another planet, but another planet in 3D. So that's why there is this energy of, yeah, it feels like Earth, but it's not Earth. Even though you could think it's Earth, but it's still... Yes, a very unique energy and I'm, be and I'm being told that you have had many lifetimes there and yeah, it's a very, I I'm just, I'm, I, I, I'm continuously being shown this very specific uh, aesthetic that is present in a lot of Japanese movies um, now that I think about it. It's this aesthetic in Japanese movies when they are portraying ancient cultures. It's... It's so hard to describe. If you don't like Japanese animation movies, you probably think, what are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, it's this... But yeah, let's see what's, what this is about. It's a very unique um, energy and architecture and surrounding that I'm being put in. Um, what's the name of this other movie? I've just seen it. Agartha. It's a Japanese movie um, called Agartha. And they, they go into inner earth. Yeah, it's this very unique imagery. Or it's this very unique... Ah, it's so hard to describe. <laughs> but if you feel cold, if you like Japanese animation movies, then I highly recommend you to watch um, The Castle in the Sky uh, or the movie Agartha. <clears throat> because there is most definitely going to be some sort of an inspiration that correlates to your past lifetime. <clears throat> but I'm also being taken to Agartha now that we're mentioning it, because with Agartha, it's still part of Earth, but it exists in a higher dimension. So that's why it feels like Earth, but it's not really Earth. And I'm really being taken also to the giants, and that's the realm of Shambhala, where the ancient ones live and the giants, they are basically our ancestors. Because in very, very, very ancient times, in even before Lemuria, in Hyperborea, Lemuria Atlantis, like the, the star ancestor, the giants that were living on Earth, they, not all of them have left Earth, but they have simply ascended to a higher dimension. But it's still Earth, but in another timeline or in a parallel, in a parallel Earth. That's exactly what I want to say. The energy that is coming through is Earth, but in a parallel lifetime. And it's connected to the ancient ones. It's connected to the giants. And it's, yeah, connected to lost civilizations, but not lost civilizations of this timeline. <laughs> 
some of you may be thinking what on earth are you talking about but no i have to honor what's coming through that's exactly the energy that i'm feeling and yeah you have had many lifetimes there or more so i'm being told obviously past lifetimes are parallel lifetimes so i'm being called for you to connect with them i'm being called for you to call in these giants call in these star ancestors of yours if you feel connected to look into that into inner earth agartha shambhala hades tartarus no matter what you want to call it it's inner earth but in another dimension and in a higher realm or different timeline uh but yeah very unique energy i i already love this so let's see where this is going we have the five of coins again i'm <laughs> i'm being shown the scene um of spirited away a lot of japanese movies so you either like japanese movies a lot uh, animation movies or there is something about them but I'm being shown this scene uh, where Chihiro and their parents, they go into this house at the very beginning, one of the first scenes, and they almost cross the threshold into another realm. This is like where they go into this, it looks like a station or this very old house. And as they go into, through this house, they go to basically it's a portal to the spirit world because on the other side it's the realm where then Chihiro finds all the spirits and the, it's the bathhouse and yeah there is a sense of crossing a threshold and it's almost like in this lifetime you have crossed the threshold but the other way around so you came from the spirit world you came from inner earth you came from this magical mystical dimension but you have crossed the threshold into the human realm, <laughs> into this side of the of the coin. So, yeah, oh my god, I love this energy. Let's see what else comes up. Queen of Wands. Sorry, I'm just checking. Yeah, that's great. Two of Coins. Two of Pentacles. Ten of Cups. Okay. Knight of Coins. I love this pile. What is going on? Who are you? <laughs> can you can you tell me more about you? I'm feeling a very yeah, it's a very flowy energy. Very unique. That's what I want to say. You are a very unique person. And I feel not many of your your soul tribe is incarnated right now. So maybe sometimes you might be feeling a bit lonely because with the 5 of Coins, it's also you were almost hesitant to go to this other side because again in this movie like Chihiro is very hesitant to follow their parents to go into this building because she almost feels like oh uh, this could be yeah she almost feels like she doesn't want to go but there is this wind breathing her and almost urging her to go. And this is the same with you, like you cross to the other side, like you, you knew that you had to come here in this realm, but you were almost a bit hesitant. But it's again, you knew that there is a gem to be found. You knew that there is a golden nugget to be found. And again, I'm really being taken to that scene, like cro cross crossing the threshold and going through that portal and releasing or letting go of almost going out of the womb, letting go of the environment that you are familiar and going out of the womb, going emerging out of inner earth and going into a realm that is not as familiar to you but again you knew that you that you would find something that you would find something there that you will learn something there on a soul level and very interestingly with the queen of wands i'm being taken again to your energy being very unique so you knew that by coming here you were standing out anyway and that uniqueness is one of your greatest powers 
because it's about I'm hearing ushering a new age with the eon it's about bringing in this frequency this very unique frequency of obviously it can be inner earth it can also be another 3d planet on uh, in, in, in another star system but it's about bringing in that light that uniqueness and by grounding that into the earth it's yeah it's ushering a new age in the sense that by you bringing in your uniqueness you are enriching this planet because i'm really being told that not many of your tribe is here and that's why sometimes maybe you felt a little bit lonely because with the five of coins the energy that is coming through is also sometimes feeling lack of not so much lack of abundance because the five of coins speaks of lack of resources but more so lack of togetherness of support of feeling understood feeling seen but again i'm continuously being taken to chihiro's um to spirited away as time goes on chihiro learns to love the spirits or they learn to because <laughs> at the beginning uh, maybe you like this movie but I I'm feeling called to talk about it with this movie so if you've seen it and I hope you did at the beginning Chihiro is being rejected by their surroundings because humans have a different smell than the spirits who are living in the spirit realm and she feels very lonely she feels very alone and she feels like she is the only one and there is this sense of loneliness of not being seen not being valued not being appreciated but as time goes on she starts to see the gold in this situation she, she starts to find these golden nuggets of why she came here because again at the beginning she felt a resistance to go through that threshold she felt a resistance to come on the other side but inherently deep down she knew that she was called to because the wind was blowing her through almost urging her to go there and as time goes on when she is facing the stinky monster which is not an easy task <laughs> then after that she really yeah she's really being valued about her work like she has to do the dirty work and after that she is really being praised for her contributions and she's being valued and accepted by a community that is not of her own like she is a human but she lives in the spirit world and even if she is not of the same tribe she's still being accepted and still being seen so how this lifetime is connected with your lifetime here through your uniqueness you are super enriching for the community because what you bring in is something that is has never been here before like the light that you are shining is super unique and with the queen of wands it's the energy of of course you shining of course you being confident but the light that you are shining the thing that you are radiating is also serving the community and that's why you're ushering a new age simply by embodying your energy because it's so unique and maybe you are an artist maybe you are a writer i'm also being taken to writing fantasy novels writing um maybe stories or theaters they're definitely something very creative and the thing that you're contributing is so unique because yeah no one else has this information that you have no one else has experienced these lifetimes because there are not many of your kind in this realm and it's almost yeah super unique wow who are you please please let me know in the comments how you resonate with that and if you feel connected with uh, Japanese movies animation movies and before I continue I feel called to pull some oracle cards and we're asking about the past lifetime of my tile number three and how these correlate to this present lifetime okay there's 
myself. Okay, there we go. Yes, shine your light. Two more. Ooh, yes. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. So we have shine your light. Perfect with the Queen of Wands. Then we have cities of light. That's exactly the energy that I have been feeling. Inner Earth, Etheric Retreats, Family of Light, Telos, Adama. And before I continue the last card, Arcturians, Pure White Light, DNA Healing and Sacred Geometry. So this is exactly the energy that was coming through. Like you are connected to Earth, but in an other dimension and in an other timeline. And it's really, yes, this energy of the cities of light in the sense that there are ancient cultures that still live. It's not literally under the earth, but it's energetically connected to the earth, but existing in another vibration. And this is the realm where all these ancient civilizations, they still exist. They still live. They still, uh, yeah, it's like... Um, Lemurian energy coming through, it's inner earth energy, Shambhala energy coming through, and it's really your invitation, a strong message that is coming through right now, is to reconnect back with that essence of yours. And I'm being taken to the pineal glands, <laughs> so maybe you're really going through a big spiritual awakening right now, a big, uh, yes, th inner eye opening, uh, pineal activations, uh, DMT secretion of the pineal gland that allows you to see these realms and to tap into these realms. And for some of you, also plant medicine is coming through. I don't know if you feel called to do th things like that, but this is also coming through. I'm honoring everything that's coming through. And I'm really being told that you're being guided by these ancient masters. You're being guided by these ancient ancient beings like I'm, I'm being i'm seeing these giants and they have messages for you and it's about bringing in that frequency to the surface because again inner earth is not necessarily inside like physically inside the earth but it's energetically stored in the spirit realm and what you're doing is basically opening a portal for this information, this frequency to be birthed into this realm. Like almost you're coming up to the surface with this information and you are weaving it into the web of Mother Gaia. And wow, such a unique energy. I love channeling this pile. And um, with the Five of Pentacles, I'm really being taken to the, the Hathors and to the Pleiades as well. So also Taurus energy coming through. So um, you're here to create um, a garden. That's what I'm hearing. You're here to create the circumstances that you were used to in, let's say, inner earth or in these parallel dimensions, in these parallel lifetimes. And you're here to build. You're here to create this new structure, this new... Yeah, this is, it's, it's super unique energy. It's almost... With um, Arcturians, I'm being taken to um, to the monoliths, like sacred geometry. And it's exactly the same tribe of beings that in ancient times were responsible for building structures like Stonehenge. Yes, they are cosmic beings, but they have been living on Earth for a very long time. And right now they still live on Earth but in another dimension. So yes, there is cosmic energy coming through, but it's very ancient to Earth, and you're part of that tribe, and that's why there are the giants coming through. And yes, you could very well have been, um, have had lifetimes on Arcturus, but it's more so the energy of sacred geometry. In a past lifetime, maybe you also have, or you have, no, not maybe, you have um, been contributing to building monoliths on Earth. Also, I'm being taken to the pyramids. 
So you had have had knowledge of the telluric forces of Earth. You have a lot of knowledge of the ley lines. You have knowledge of the energetic currents of Mother Gaia. And in these knots, in these places, in these dragon lines, you have put ancient structures. May they be monoliths, may they be pyramids or castles or temples. So on a soul level, you're also a builder. You are an architect. And I love this energy. Like I'm, I'm feeling you. <laughs> I'm feeling a connection with you. And I'm feeling part of that tribe as well. And I'm feeling that, yes, you have been working with the dragon lines. You have been working with the ley lines in ancient times. And it's very important for you to bring back this knowledge to bring back this, yeah, a lot of grid work coming through. So you might feel called to do grid work in this lifetime. You might feel called to literally connect with mystical beings, especially in this moment, because all the dragons and the fairies, unicorns, mystical beings, they do exist, but just not in this realm. It's in the realms of inner earth of Agartha and yeah, with the Hierophant, I'm being taken to the Druids. So a deep connection to Earth, but higher dimensional Earth. And this is exactly what Earth needs right now. Because very often, I feel that in the spiritual community or in the starseed community or whatever you want to call it, there is a big focus on very, very, very high vibrational cosmic energies, which obviously is very beautiful. We all come from there, we've all been there on a soul level. But what Earth needs right now is more of a grounded frequency. Because these 12 dimensions or 8 dimensions, or like these Arcturian energies, like obviously they are very important to be channeled into Earth. But it's equally as important to also channel these energies of inner Earth, to channel the energies like to to allow the fairies to come out, that's what I'm hearing again, to allow the nature spirits like to also look at that side of the coin, to not just focus only on the very, let's say, sometimes a bit ungrounded cosmic energies, but to look at it from a more grounded perspective, like this was so real on earth, people have been communicating with fairies, people have been seeing dragons, they have been working with the ley lines, they have been following the the grid of the structures, they have been building temples on these structures and you have been there, you have done that work, you have been building temples in ancient times, you have been, yeah, again, pyramids. And what you're doing in this lifetime is bringing that frequency back, grounding that information and building a new web of temples, a new grid of information, new monoliths also, almost. So it's not that you're literally building pyramids, but it's bringing back that frequency that allows us to tap into these energies. And I'm being told this is what gives you a lot of fulfillment because this is your soul essence. Like you're here to, to build some sort of a foundation that is allowing peace to come back. It's almost chasing away all this demonic energy and opening portals for this more light-hearted energy to flow through. But it's again, yeah, I'm also hearing new Lemuria. So it's bringing back this frequency of these ancient cultures that has already been here. So it's not, we're not talking about other dimensions, other planets, other, other star systems, but bringing back the ancient times, bringing back the frequency of Lemuria. And obviously, who else to do this work? than not a person who has been there in ancient times. And that's why this is part of your soul mission, also part of why this is coming up now, for you to remember that you are one of these giants, one of these star elders, this Celtic, Celtic, Lemurian, Atlantean star giants beings. <laughs> I absolutely love this energy, like this reading up until now, beautiful. And I'm feeling called to pull some more of these cards to end this reading. 
and we're asking about the past lifetimes of my pile number three and how this correlates to this specific lifetime. Oops. Okay, yes. Oh my goodness, that's all. Oh. <laughs> I love the synchronicities in this reading. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. And this one. No, nope. this one. All right. So again, with the pagoda, I'm being taken back to Shambhala again, these realms, and the architecture of circular buildings. Because in ancient times, uh, especially in Atlantis, most of the temples, they were circular. Because the, a circle was the, the closest to source, the closest to divine completion. And that's why at the very beginning I was being taken to this very unique architecture of circular temples, of bringing in this ancient architecture, or it doesn't obviously have to be architecture, but it's about bringing in the ideas, the pattern, the blueprint of these ancient cultures into this realm. And it has to do obviously with the divine. So it's about creating spaces to invoke this sacred energy, creating spaces that allows us to, yeah, to connect back to that frequency and circular temples. And also there is a secret this is something that not many people know about and this is something that only you have to offer. And that's why it's so important for you to shine your light, to spread these seeds because you hold that frequency. And it's really about so funny with the... Uh, with the... Um, Strut, so how do you call it? Ostrich. It's, <laughs> it's... I don't know, it's so funny. It's about taking out your head from under the earth leaving inner earth, <laughs> taking your head out and bringing it to the light. So it's really about, yeah, you have been roaming in the realms of inner earth, ancient civilizations, Lemuria, Atlantis, and now you are taking your head out and now we are on the surface. And now we are here and yeah, the ostri ostrich, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, um, is one of the, is the biggest bird and it's also one of the fastest, if not the fastest, always, obviously on ground. And it's about moving forward with that. It's about hearing that divine calling. And yeah, it's so funny. Like you are a star being, you are a bird, you are a being from the heavens, but you're super connected to the earth. That's why ostrich, they are not flying. They are, um, yeah, they are connected more to the earth. And also the energy of a dinosaur, like they have been evolving from dinosaurs and you are a dinosaur <laughs> to earth, like you are this ancient being. And yeah, it's about to, it's, it's, for, it's, this lifetime is about bringing that ancient wisdom and moving forward, running. Yeah, creating almost like now is your time to go, go with it. It's like a play with it and see how, how it works out. It's important that yeah, it, it's not that there is a one road to go. It's like more so an energy of experimentation, like creating many different paintings, not just creating one painting, but using this technique, maybe creating an oil painting or an acrylic painting or a water painting and then moving to the next. It's like it, there is no, it's not that there is a set thing to do or it's not that there is like one road to go. But it's really about the most important thing that I'm hearing is to shine that light, to bring that wisdom to the surface and to yeah, simply see where this is leading you. And maybe if you find enough of your tribe that have been there in ancient Lemurian times and in ancient, ancient Atlantean times or inner earth, then we may be literally be able to build pyramids again. <laughs> but it's about sharing your truth, that uniqueness, shining that unique light, and people will be recognizing that. And that's why it's important for you to bring these things out, no matter what it is, writing, 
painting, drawing, creating gardens, creating sanctuaries, creating a school, creating a temple, a literal temple, a literal space that allows us to connect with this vibe. And when you're doing that, then you are creating the space of your tribe to be drawn to that energy. And that's why maybe you have been feeling lonely for a long time, because you felt that nobody, you, you saw nobody of your tribe around. But as soon as you are bringing out this frequency and birthing this energy into creation, then your tribe will recognize that and they will be magnetically drawn to you. They will magnetically come to you because they recognize that frequency and they will see that frequency. And again, if enough of your tribe gathers, then maybe someday we will be able to build pyramids again, to build temples again and to rise again and to bring this frequency to this realm to literally take the inner earth from the underworld into this realm and this is one of the reasons why we're here we are here to build literally build these cities of light to literally build like um, heaven on earth that's what i'm hearing and on a soul level in your past lifetimes you have been a builder of that a ancient star giant being building temples, building monoliths, building crystalline cities. And guess what? <laughs> You're back here to do exactly the same. <laughs> but this time in this realm and casting out all this darkness, casting out all this ignorance and these lower vibrational energies and bringing in this purity so that the fountain of beauty and magic can flow again. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I absolutely love these readings and yeah, thank you so much for allowing me to tap into this energy. I really hope that you resonate with the reading and uh, I'm also offering personal readings. So if you feel called to book a personal reading, um, you can always reach out to me and I'm sending you all my love, I'm sending you all my blessings and I hope to see you in the next reading. Thanks so much for watching.